Jon Stewart is back and he has a show on Apple Plus and he really just this is him at his best, honestly, in this interview that you're going to that you're about to see. And yeah, the rally to restore sanity sucked. But there are moments in Jon Stewart's career where he has exceeded the the talents and the value of a great majority of journalists in this country at least on on cable tv for sure when he's able to pin people down i'll never forget when he had judith miller on the daily show and he just crapped all over her to her face for carrying water for the bush administration which allowed uh for the illegal invasion of iraq and the murder of uh in wartime and the killing of hundreds of thousands if not up to a million iraqis and let alone the tens of thousands of soldiers that died uh, in that process so he was in during the iraq war era invaluable and then he took some time off and now he's back and he's in his comfort zone with this interview where um he spoke with the uh here i have this in my notes here the arkansas attorney general yes uh her name is leslie rutledge and in arkansas they decided to ban gender affirming care for minors despite the fact that these major medical organizations testify during that process to the benefits of that health care and here's just part of this interview which goes on for I would not say a painful amount of time because I enjoyed it, but for her purposes, you could just almost see the sweat beating uh, on her forehead where he just doesn't let up. And this is incredibly instructive for how people in the media and how uh, just regular folks should combat transphobia and, the, and how paper thin their arguments are. Why would the state of Arkansas step in to override parents, physicians, psychiatrists, endocrinologists who have developed guidelines. Why would you override those guidelines? Well, I think it's important that all of those physicians, all of those experts, for every single one of them, there's an expert that says we don't need to allow children to be able to take those medications, that there are many instances right. where but you know that's not true you, you know it's not for everyone there's one there's these are the established well i don't know that, that that's not true i don't know that then why you would you that. why would you pass a law then if you don't if you don't know that that's true wouldn't you well i know so? that there are doctors and that we had plenty of people come and testify before our legislature mm -hmm. who said that uh you know we have 98 percent of the young people who have gender dysphoria right. uh, that they are able to move past that and once they have the the help that they need no longer suffer from gender dysphoria 98 wow. percent without uh that medical treatment that's an, that's and an so, incredibly made-up figure <laughs> that's that doesn't comport with any of the studies or documentation that exists from these medical organizations what what medical association are you talking about of these doctors well we have all of that in our uh legislative history and we'll be glad to provide that to you uh, i don't have the name of that off the top of my head i know it's something that you don't have the name of the organization that, that off you're the getting top that of my head oh okay but yes we have all of that cited in all of our briefs you're suggesting that protecting children means overriding the recommendations of the american medical association the american association of pediatrics the endocrine society. We don't have enough data. We don't have enough to show that these drugs are effective and that these children are better off and that we should you don't encourage have enough, these. Or it's not enough for you. Let, let me let me try and flip it a different way and see if maybe this this can help. In Arkansas, if you have pediatric cancer, and obviously we all want to protect children, I think we established that earlier. Whose guidelines do you follow for pediatric cancer? Well, I think if my child, who is four, if I was faced with that terrible uh, decision, then I would be speaking to my doctor. And if my doctor recommended something that I disagreed with, then I would get a second Whoop. opinion. And that's what I believe that these parents need to make sure that they're encouraged to get numerous opinions when they're talking about an irreversible step. You're not letting them. Can. The state's not saying get another opinion. What they're saying is you can't. What you're actually saying no, is that's the opposite. Actually, not at all what the state said. The state simply said that you cannot 
perform these procedures. And so parents should get another opinion that they, and children should want to have another opinion. But that's not. Because again, these are nine, 10, 11 So if your child is suffering from pediatric cancer and the state comes in and says to you, they recommend chemotherapy, but we're not going to let you do that. You can't. We think you should get a different opinion. And here's the organization we think you should get the opinion from. They're not the mainstream, but they're an organization. So that's how you, that's who you have to be treated by. Does that sound like something you would Well, accept? I think that's a very extreme example. That's not at all in line with what we're talking about. We're not saying that at some point, because when you have cancer, it literally is, and particularly pediatric cancer, and having friends that have lost children sure. to pediatric cancer, having a four-year-old, I'm sure. I've got some bad news for you. Parents with children who have gender dysphoria have lost children to suicide and, and depression. And they absolutely Because it's have. acute. And so these mainstream medical organizations have developed guidelines through peer-reviewed data and studies. And through those guidelines, they've improved mental health outcomes. So I'm confused why you follow AMA guidelines and AAAP guidelines for all other health issues than Arkansas, because we checked, but not for this. It's simply saying, let those young people who are facing gender confusion and dysphoria, allow them to become adults and to make that decision. Allow a child to be a child. So here's where we have our, our crossroads. You've made the determination that protecting these children means not giving them access to the guidelines and care that have been designed by medical and mental health professionals for children expressing gender dysphoria. And I'm asking you again, what are your qualifications to step in and say, no, keeping you from that care is protecting you. You've made that determination. Well, these are irreversible decisions. All right, we're, we're good. Children. Yeah, I mean, we don't want to play the full clip because, hey, who knows? I mean, this is a television program and you got to check it out for yourself on Apple TV. I thought I would cut it off even earlier just to make sure we were all good uh, from a you know, rights perspective, but I couldn't, I couldn't, Cut it off because it's rare. To, it's rare to get an interview. Whoa! This, like, like I think properly and helpfully adversarial. I could. Yeah. I couldn't believe she didn't walk out because he had her pegged. Right. No. It was. It was fantastic to watch, and you don't see that so much anymore. Like you know, John Stewart. Um, he he was really good at doing that sort of thing for for a while on the Daily Show, and um, when he left, you know, uh, not to diss the 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 host that took over, but he didn't quite right. do that in the same way. Um, Trevor Noah, and he's leaving now too, so who knows what's happening with the Daily Show? But um, you know, John Stewart's new show came back, and and it sort of hasn't been so so headline grabbing, honestly, until this moment when John Stewart went back to old form like listen john stewart probably doesn't line up perfectly with our politics uh, he never did um there was a lot to criticize about over the years with john stewart but he always was really good at this type of interview um and he he really laid it all out there and then this interview i mean i don't know how you look at this and think she looked good uh in any way shape or form she wasn't even able to like finagle her way out of it in the usual like slimy ways that they're able to at least like claim like oh you know uh, a win here there was it was she had nothing even when she tried yeah. to make a point he was so successfully able to turn it back around on her i mean there, there's no reason for any of this, honestly. It's, it's they're, they're, they clearly just don't want uh, trans people to exist. It's, yes. it's that, it's that simple. That's what all of this is about. Uh, the idea of caring about kids, no, uh, they don't. Because if it was up to them, they would ban uh, any sort of transgender care. Period. Well beyond the age of eighteen, I guarantee you. Um, they're doing. Well, what you they have can Jordan do. Peterson saying that the person, that the doctor who did uh, Elliot Page's top surgery because Elliot Page wanted to, as a full blown adult is a butcher that's what they've been saying that's that's what uh the right is saying they don't care about it, the fact that it's kids that just allows them to feel like they have some sort of morality and when they 
uh, are engaging in anti-trans hatred. And you could see that she thought that she had some sort of foothold when uh, cancer came up because she wanted to be like, oh, well, that's there's no equivalent there. There's no equivalent to cancer. Maybe in terms of infant or child mortality, I don't know if those figures are different or wh uh, whatever the, the, the discrepancy is. It doesn't necessarily matter. What matters is, is that those are both issues that are dealt with between parents, children, and the doctors. And the doctors make that determination. And what happened in Arkansas is that they've essentially said that when it comes to this issue with your doctor, you can't. You are blocked from doing that. We don't have parental rights in this instance. No, we're going to make a determination, as John Stewart said, about your child without knowing any of the specifics, because we have decided that trans people should not exist, as right. you say. We don't want to see them. We don't want to affirm them. We want them back in the closet and we want to put our heads in the sand and pretend that they don't exist because they challenge notions of gender and sexuality that make us very uncomfortable. And frankly, I don't give a shit if you're uncomfortable. I want right. everybody to be, uh, I, I want people to be able to live in peace. And trans people existing does nothing to make you not live in peace. So, sorry, you're done. <laughs> no, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's... This this is something where you know she said something that stuck stuck out to me, and this isn't the you know this isn't something uh, you know some big reveal. This is the the case with a lot of conservatives. But she said uh, when she brought up the the, the uh, when she thought she had something going on there with uh, you know child cancer, um, she said, "Oh, I've known people who went through that." She probably doesn't know any trans people because, as we know, or, or families with transgender children, because as we know, uh, conservatives cannot feel empathy if they do not experience something for themselves. They need to personally feel the sadness of, I don't know, uh, this lady's best friend, Jane, not being able to make it to brunch anymore because she has to attend her children's chemotherapy appointments. She needs to feel uh, in, you know, something. There needs to be something there for to, to personally affect her life for her to then go oh this is what it's like because she didn't care to even think about transgender people who commit suicide or transgender people who go through all sorts of horrible things because they're they're living a life that they don't feel is true to themselves um and they just want to do that uh, the, the idea that you would ban any of this is unbelievable i forgot who it was on twitter but someone on twitter made a, a perfect point it's like uh, imagine getting a tattoo you didn't like and then going uh, you whenever they use the the d they're like the the small all percentage of people who are detransitioners imagine getting a tattoo you didn't like and all of a sudden being like oh that's it time to ban tattoos um i mean it's it's right. ridiculous this whole thing of uh whether it, it doesn't even matter who it is in terms of um they just go after anyone that they can't personally feel for and unfortunately that's transgender people each and every time no matter what the case is and now they're going full throttle with this uh feign into this faux interest in uh children's health when it comes to transgender kids it's 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 bullshit it's bullshit that's exactly it it's bullshit